Today I'm gonna answer the following question. Hello Chris, hope you're doing well. I have a snare track recorded with ghost notes. I need to separate the hits of the snare from the ghost notes and put them into two different tracks. Is there a simple way to do this in Cubase? So I'm gonna answer your question by showing you a very cool way that you can do this in Cubase. What's going on? The Chris here from Mixdown Online. Now, before we jump in, I just want to give you guys a quick update on what's to come on this channel in the next few weeks. Now, we are living into these very intense times right now with that crappy and crazy virus that is going on. Um, so what I decided to do is to move things around so I can give you way more content on this channel. And this is starting right now with this video. So I'm gonna be posting more than only once a week. Uh, so maybe twice or even three times a week. Because I know that a lot of you are stuck at home. And I don't wanna leave you guys alone, you know? So uh, I'm, I wanna be there with you by giving you a bit more content. Um, and also, you can follow me on Instagram. If you never went on my Instagram account, check it out. Um, and maybe Make sure you subscribe to my Instagram account. The link is on top. I'm gonna be posting some stories and posts and stuff like that. All right, so now let's answer this question and jump right into this video. Now there's a way I can use in Cubase that is gonna help me out with this, you know, to separate the hits from the ghost notes out of the snare drum. So um, this is the track that I'm gonna be working on today. Okay, a raw drum recording um, that I did here in the studio a year ago. And you know, that drummer was playing with a lot of ghost notes. And what I'm gonna do here is to separate those ghost notes uh, from all the snare hits. Uh, so first, I'm gonna duplicate the snare channel right here, okay? So I'm gonna right click and click on duplicate tracks. And this is gonna make a copy of that exact snare. All right, so now I'm gonna select the event I'm gonna work on. And the only part I wanna uh, work on is the last of this recording because that last part is where the drummer plays with a lot of ghost notes. Uh, so this is the audio event I wanna work on. So I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna go on top, click on audio, go down to advanced and then detect silence. I did a video two years ago, I think maybe more um, about uh, removing breath out of a vocal using a similar technique with uh, with detect silence. Okay, check it out. I'm going to leave the link on top. Uh, but now what I have here, I'm just going to zoom in so I can see all the hits that I have. And uh, I have here a open threshold and a close threshold. I'm going to leave those two linked together. And this is what it's going to give me. Okay, so if I increase uh, the, uh, the threshold value, I'm not gonna get anything, okay? So if I just wanna um, focus on specific hits, I need to bring down the threshold, the close and open threshold, until I can detect the hits uh, I wanna, just I wanna keep uh, my focus on. All right, so there you go. So those are my snare hits, okay? All right, now next I'm gonna need to uh, fix the minimum time open and the minimum time closed of those hits, okay? So if I bring that value up, okay, this is gonna extend the end also. Um, if I bring it way up, it's gonna, you know, take way more, the range is gonna extend. And this is not what I want. I wanna keep that tight a bit, okay? So I'm just gonna bring it down to around 149. Uh, and the minimum uh, time closed, let's bring that up. And, uh, you know, let me bring that to around 240 milliseconds in that case. So this is gonna close the gap between those, uh, those two hits. I'm just gonna bring up the uh, time open just a bit. What about this? I think that is, I think 160 would be even better, so. All right, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna go and uh, 
All right, that's good. I'm just going to look around to make sure everything is up to pace. All right, so we're good. Um, now, next, what I'm going to do here is make sure the check is on strip silence, and I'm going to keep auto checked on also, and click on process. And this is going to split and delete all the silence between the hits. And this is what I want to start with. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fade in and fade out those events. They're all selected right now, so I'm just going to take that first one, add a bit of a fade into it and same for a fade out just to smooth things out. And then I'm just gonna zoom out a bit. All right, uh, what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna open, select my snare track again, open the channel settings window and I'm gonna reverse the polarity of the snare track. I'm gonna solo both copies, okay, the snare track that is uh, phase reversed and also the copy of that snare track that is untouched and this is what it's going to sound like Okay, now I only have the ghost notes So the only thing that I need to do from this point on is to bounce this on a new track. So I'm just gonna make sure I have my left and right locators set up, uh, which I, I do. So I'm gonna just bounce that and call that D4 drums, the snare, ghost notes, that's good. I'm gonna create a audio track. So by exporting that track, it is gonna create a new one in my project and insert that bounce directly in the project. So to do so, I'm gonna make sure to create audio track is selected and that will also um, check on the insert to pull. Okay, and I'm gonna click mono down mix, which is what I want. Make sure I have the correct sample rate. I think this one is at 44.1. And I'm gonna click on export audio. Now I have the ghost note track right here. Now the only thing that I need to do is just to test it out to make sure everything works well. So first, I'm gonna make sure I select my original snare track and uh, click on reverse polarity one more time. Okay, since I don't need that, um, that option to be on at the moment. And this is how it's gonna sound like. So there you go, this is how I separate ghost notes from snare hits in Cubase. I hope that was helpful, if so, share and like this video, and if you're new here on the channel, subscribe to the channel. Now I'm going to see you later on this week, I have a very cool video talking about the Fader Report 16 and its integration in Cubase, this is going to be a series of 2-3 videos, I think 3 videos actually, um, this is going to come up later this week. Don't forget to leave your comments and especially your questions, because this is going to help me to create some very cool content for you guys. Alright my friends, take care and see you soon. <laughs>